Well, good morning. Welcome back to Chop for Time. I'm Devin. I'm here with Ben and Thomas, and we are going to discuss yesterday's message and continuing with the series, When the Brook Runs Dry. Well, uh, well, let's start off with a word of prayer because it's most important that we invite God into this room to help us out. Uh, Ben, would you open us up? Love to. God, thank you uh, for another day of life that you've given us. God, we pray uh, for people around us, uh, both here locally in Grayson in this community and and in the communities of where the people are watching. God, there's there's so much happening right now. Uh, Hurt, sorrow, loss, grief pain. And God, I just pray that your peace that passes all understanding would just settle um, upon our lives as we navigate through this time. Father, I pray that as we discuss uh, your word here today, that you would give us inspiration to speak rightly and to, uh, to dig just a little bit deeper into the truths of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, Before we go on, I just ask you to take a second. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. And we also ask that you to hit the like button. That allows us to get out to more people and allows you to be able to hear the message sooner. So if you would do that for us, that'd be really great. Um, Let's go on and talk about yesterday's message. Continue with the series, When the Brook Runs Dry. Great job yesterday. Uh, Enjoyed the points, the four points at the beginning and the four points at the end. But for people that didn't hear, could you kind of give us a recap? Yeah. So, you know, we're we're following Elijah's story here. And you preached, you know, the previous Sunday on his experience at Cherith as he had been obedient to God. Uh, He had, you know, confronted Ahab, spoke the word of the Lord about the drought that was coming. And then once he did that, God instructed him to go hide um, because he was now a fugitive, you know. Uh, most wanted yes. and in Ahab's kingdom at that point. And he went to Cherith where he was provided water and food as provision daily, uh, twice a day, actually the birds fed him. And then, uh, you know, you, you detailed that about how we're to respond. And we just kind of built on that a little bit. So he's, he's moving from Cherith to Zarephath. And we took talk about, you know, a few things that, Hey, he's leaving Cherith with this understanding, uh, and as he goes, he's moving into this new town, this new place. Um, you know, it's it's a pagan city. You know, it's not. Um, you know, they're they're not worshippers of Yahweh. Uh, there, it's a Baal um, town where they worship mm-hmm. uh, the god Baal. So, um, you know, we just talked about the challenges, some of the things that he faced there. God instructed him to go uh, meet a widow uh, that would pr- help provide for him and. And we talked about that that encounter, uh, you know, the command that he was willing to go and be obedient to God yet again, and then the uh, the encounter that he had, and just the fact of really what I wanted to key on was his situation didn't improve drastically. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, yeah, there was provision, there was a little bit more than what he had, and just how we tend to face things, testing of our faith, back to back to back to back, you know, and it it rarely in my life has ever worked that I go from a a dry place to a place of abundance mm-hmm. and no worries, no concerns. Um, and, and that's really kind of where we centered yesterday around. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, Thomas, did anything in yesterday's message stand out to you? Yeah, I, uh, I really enjoyed a certain little section that I'm sure we're going to talk about again. Uh, it was that... Um, Going through trials and difficulties is not always as a result of discipline. Or I, I can't remember the exact way that you phrased it, but that God can use negative experiences to grow us. You know that it's that it's not always a form of punishment, um, which you know just gets the mind thinking a lot. You know, not not to say that God doesn't punish us whenever or discipline us when discipline is required, but. Um, yeah, it just, I think it was a really interesting perspective. I think we are really wrapped up still with a slightly more Old Testament perspective of like, you know, smiting. Yeah. <laughs> good, old, yeah. good Old Testament smiting where like, oh, if I do this, everything in my life is going to fail. And it's like, that's not necessarily how it works. You know, life has ebbs and flows and and 
God uses those ebbs and flows regardless of your performance, so to speak. You know, you look at Joseph being a prime example of, you know, his brothers doing evil and he went through the hardship, but God was able to use it for good, yeah. you know. Yeah, that was that was kind of that last takeaway from where we were talking about the what he was taking from Cherith with him to Zarephath and to that one concept of dry times in your life does not always equate to punishment. You know, it can they can signify God's approval. Amen. I mean, Jesus, we see that in his life. He was um, in the wilderness for forty days, and Scripture records that he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Amen. You know, the spirit was leading him into a dry place. Um, and that that's not a real popular uh, <laughs> theology that we like to teach on and embrace uh, because none of us like dry times. I mean, it's just we don't like the wilderness experience, but there there are times that we find ourselves in that place. And it's a sign, actually a sign of God's approval in our lives as opposed to a form of discipline. But I think at Luke, it says he went by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, he was he was led into the into the wilderness by the spirit and he came out in the power of the spirit exactly so i mean that that testing time yeah. worked out for an empowerment and i think that's really important i um you know i love the little the last points that i'm just going to read these real mm -hmm. quick don't overanalyze what god is doing don't quit the first days are the hardest mm -hmm. don't ignore my part in what god is doing and don't fail to be thankful and i that's the point that i just kind of want to key in on you know we talked okay. a little bit before on this attitude of you know the attitude of gratitude attitude of gratitude, gratitude beat brother. That into yeah. the place right there i'm sure every person in the church has ever heard that message right there but Really, attitude is everything. Yeah, you know, I tell my daughter that at least once a day. You know, because you know she's gonna whine, or she's only she's only six. She's she's not part of the. You know, if I tell her something, it's a fall down, agonizing, horrible situation. Even I wish I, I could get away with that. <laughs> I still want to do that. But anyhow, go ahead. Yeah, it's, but yeah, it's you know. So I'm like, attitude is everything, and I think, you know. Two things. Number one, I want to look at these verses. We have a couple verses that I want to look at, but I want to talk about thankfulness and how to be thankful in every situation. You know, I mean, what does that even mean? And is that that I have to walk around with a big cheesy smile right, on my face, right. or you know, yeah. um, you know, or you know, it's like praise God somebody died. You know, I mean, those kind of things that because you know we got to work. You know, hey, I sinned. Should I smile and yeah, thank you Jesus for the cross. You know, really, how should we deal with this? Right. I think it's important. Yeah, yeah. First Thessalonians five eighteen tells tells us to be thankful in all things. Be thankful always, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Um, but I think that there's realities that we have to look at. Um, you know, emotions make horrible gods. Mm. You know, our emotions make terrible masters. Right. But we have been created by God with our emotions. So it's not like it's us versus our emotions. We just can't be controlled by our emotions so we have to learn how to allow christ to redeem these and sanctify these mm. emotions uh, sadness is a real emotion yeah. grief sorrow anger all of these things they're real emotions um and when we're talking about the attitude of gratitude kind of thing i think it goes um you know we can really look at it from a perspective standpoint because i'm a big reactive versus proactive kind of person and i feel like we have this naturally wired tendency in us to live reactively mm -hmm. like we're waiting for something to happen and then we respond right. in instead of understanding that things are going to happen but when they do happen it's not going to take our focus away from christ the you know the attitude of gratitude the danger of that is is we it can kind of be presented in some circles and it can kind of be received in a lot of us that we're only going to focus on the positive things and we're just you know that's all that we're going to think about is like it's the prosperity gospel mm. of good things are coming my way i'm going to speak them into existence i'm going to declare them god is going to partner with them and any bad hear thing people saying amen out there you know I, it, it's <laughs> right i mean it sounds good yeah that's what we want listen i would love for that yeah. to be 100 percent true mm. but it's biblically we're giving no, we're given no indication actually quite the opposite that's right because it talks a lot about suffering 
the Bible and Jesus talks about suffering. Like from, you will be persecuted for my name's sake. You w- in this life, there will be suffering. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's a perspective of us having to have that gratitude. If we're going to have an attitude of gratitude, it has to be in all things. It has to be in the high points. It has to be in the low points of understanding Job, you know, naked came I into this world, naked shall I depart. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Right. I, I think two key words that you said in this, you know, it, it said focus mm-hmm. and perspective. Yeah. And I think that is important. You know, that's what we need to look at to those two. How do we have a perspective or how do we have a focus that is right in the midst of trials or in Mm -hmm. these things so that we can have a grateful heart? Yeah. Um, I mean, just focusing on the on this understanding that it's all about Christ in our lives Mm -hmm. and understand that. James 4, 13 through 15, you know, we talked about that. I quoted that yesterday, but that, um, you know, why are you saying that tomorrow we're going to go to this town or in a month we're going to go to this town or this place? And it's like, don't you understand that your life is a vapor? Mm -hmm. It's a mist. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. You know, just viewing this perspective of our time here is so short. Amen. And what we experience here, and I love what Kelly said yesterday and he's offering thought because he was talking about that our eternity is now. Amen. You know, we're like, we're not waiting on eternity. Our eternity started when we were born. And God in his sovereign design has this so minuscule, this this such a minuscule time frame sets us up for the rest of our eternity. It's amazing. And that's the perspective that we have to, you know, is like, yeah, things hurt, things are painful. Um, but we also have that Genesis 50, 20 thing of Joseph of you meant it as evil against me, but God meant it for good. Mm. And how God works all of these things for our good and his glory. Okay. And even in the things that we're never going to understand fully, he's... He's doing it for our good and his glory. And that perspective has to be there and on him and what he's doing in our lives. Thomas, uh, your comments on this. Uh, I was just thinking this is uh, not connected. It's kind of connected. So you guys are roughly around 15 years older than me. Thank you for that. Just to making sure that's clarified. Um, yeah, as if our viewers can't tell that whenever if, you switch cameras. But anyway. If, uh, <laughs> if it, our eternity starts when we're born, do you have 15 years more of eternity than I do? Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> so you get more eternity. That's, that's, you know, that seems unfair. You know, you get more eternity than I do. I want to have more. I want more eternity. Does well, that, where does this guy come up with these questions, <laughs> brother? I don't know. <laughs> I spent a lot of time with James, Fletcher, with James Fletcher. These are the these are the questions that James Fletcher would ask. Uh, what would the Apostle Paul think about that question, Thomas? I don't know. I think he'd be more concerned with the the moving camera. I think it's moving I, on its own. I, I think you're right. It's an absolutely horrific thing that you just brought up there. So, actual question yes. or thought uh, was just what you were saying about prosperity gospel stuff. Because I think you know we do this this whole topic is one of those really difficult ones where it's like, hey. God will bless you. And that sounds like prosperity gospel. Uh, and it kind of is, but it's also not. Like we're, you know, we're drawing this line, which I think is important to draw. We're not like full-blown poverty gospel. Right. Um, right. We're not going to ever say that, you know, if you give more money to our church, God will definitely bless you monetarily. You know, like that's, we're not, we're not saying that. Uh, but one of the things he said is like, it sounds good. And there's a, there's a guy I like to listen to who, who refers to that as it preaches well. And yeah. I really, I really like that phrase. I think it's a good litmus test of like, it preaches well, but is it true? Mm. Like, uh, one thing I was sharing, we were listening to a song, Kyle and I, for like on our drive back from Boston. And in the song, the guy said, uh, you call me worthy. And I was like, oh, wow, that's a, that's a really cool line. And then I stopped and I thought about it and I was like, what does worthy mean? Being like, a, right. Yeah. You know, like, and then I was like, we're not worthy of the gospel. In fact, that's kind of like completely anti-gospel right there. Yeah. We're, we're not worthy of Christ, but we were worth it to him. 
So then my mind starts going in all this sort of crazy things of like, well, maybe God calls us worthy. You know the way he, he calls us children of God, where he calls us this, that, or the other, and that changes everything. So I was like scouring through the Bible and through Google being like, does the Bible, does God call us worthy? And I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I was just like, that's just one of those things. It preaches and it sounds good, mm-hmm. but actually to the wrong person, that could be very damaging. Yeah. You know, and I think every word that we say, everything that's preached from up front, especially in areas where it can, it's a bit of a seesaw, you know, um, I'm just glad that we were careful yeah. to clarify like, hey, this stuff is true, right? You know, Jesus makes it very clear that blessings do occur. Yeah. Um, but we're not going to take that and run way too far with it, nor are we going to just remove it from the Bible, yeah. and which is an important line to draw, I think. Yeah. Well, oh, I've, had the, I've had the camera on you this whole time. Oh, it, good. I didn't even realize that. Glad I, I was paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't <laughs> taking I, a nap I, 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 Hello. <laughs> Wrong camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's... Uh, it also... So many things come down to definition, I believe. Like, what is our definition of blessed as opposed to what God's definition of blessed mm-hmm. is. Because I think that that's yeah. probably going yeah. to be very different in a lot of situations. Um, and and it's like, what is our definition of good as opposed mm-hmm. to God? What's our definition of fair, just, right? I mean, you know, there's yeah. so many things that we have in our minds like, well, that just isn't right. Well, no, to me, maybe it's not. But we're talking about a supreme sovereign God. It, you know, the wind blows where it will, man. I think, I think the Beatitudes are a good example of that. Yeah. Like, cause that seems countercultural. Like, yeah, right. Blessed are the meek. Yeah. Uh, like that, that w- we would say blessed are the wealthy mm-hmm. cause they've, yeah. been, they've been blessed, but like, you know, the Beatitudes kind of flip it a little bit, you know, like it's more focused on peacemakers and, you know, humble and, and. And um, the the poor and and you know more poor in spirit is that what the mm-hmm. phrase is, is the you know so spirit, it's like yeah. I think yeah you're right like God's perspective on blessed is quite different yeah. to ours I think yeah. and I think that's the key issue is a perspective you know we can have an attitude of thanksgiving you know God because we we trust that God is sovereign mm-hmm. I mean He's over everything. There's nothing that happens that he doesn't know about. There's nothing that happens that he hasn't promised. Some, there's a promise of God. And I think one of the things we mentioned, you mentioned yesterday, was the oaths of God mm. versus the promises of yeah. God. Yeah. And the promises are dependent upon our obedience. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a, such an important thing. Philippians has a wonderful promise in there about Thanksgiving. It says, be anxious for nothing, yeah. but in everything, with prayer and supplication, yeah. um, with thanksgiving, mm-hmm. let your request be made known to God. And the promise is, so the obedience is, hey, you know, present your request to God. The promise is, and the peace of God, which yeah. surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's a promise. I, and I just like that little, the part that you mentioned, because a lot of people miss that. You know, they want all the promises of God. I mean, the promises of God and him are yes and amen. You know, people just quote that to death. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, you know, what is it? You know, I, the, the key that you point in there is, that, hey, there's a step in between receiving that promise. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to look at the difference, we don't have time to to pour it out here and detail it. But if you want to kind of see the difference, um, go reread and study the story of Abram slash Abraham, um, because the the covenant with Abraham, which is the oath, mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily begin where we think it begins or that our minds always go back to. There's a promise made to Abram first, then the oath is made later on. So I encourage you to to go back and read that kind of mm-hmm. look at that, the difference. And, and again, you know, if, if God makes an oath, if he makes a covenant, it doesn't matter if there's one person that's obedient or doing their part. It's going to happen. Right. That's just that's. It's a sovereign God. I made the covenant, made the oath. It's happening. Promises, on the other hand, are different than that. They're, they are almost always attached to obedience. Amen. If but, my people. Yes. You know, that, that type of language and verbiage in them. And I think that's, that's important right there because if we're talking about having this attitude of thanksgiving, 
in the midst of any kind of situation because Elijah had to have something like this. You know, yeah. he had to be, otherwise people just give up. Mm-hmm. If you're, you know, not thankful, if you're not grateful, you're going to start blaming God for everything that's coming your way yeah. uh, and be bitter. Like yeah. he talks about, we're going to deal with Hebrews, you know, a root of bitterness rise up and cause a lot of trouble in your life. And by this many become defiled. And I think that's so important is that we, you know, hey, how do we get this where it becomes a habit into our lives? What do you think? You know, just a question on that. How do you get an attitude of Thanksgiving to be a habit? I think another one of the takeaways that we addressed yesterday was that trusting God one day at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, one of the lessons was that you know we understand that as he's moving from Cherith to Zarephath, that he understands that God's direction is always going to include God's provision. Mm. So I think all of these things just work together because I think that when we have the proper perspective, the proper attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving, then we begin to look at the provision that God has provided in our lives. Regardless if it's whether we it's we're getting what we think we should get, what we want to get, I can look back at even the leanest, uh, driest times in my life, and I can look back and go, I see so many provisions there. Mm. Not only provisions of enough, but provisions of plenty, Mm. even in times where I thought that plenty didn't exist. Mm. So I think that as if we tune ourselves in and we focus ourselves on the perspective of I'm going to be thankful for the direction and the provision that God has placed in my life, then my trust level in him is going to increase. My faith is going to increase. And I begin to look and see that God, you know, I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. Yeah, I, I see these things in my life and that increases my faith. That starts to bring more into focus what it truly means to be blessed by God for his purposes. And I think that that heightens things in my life of all of these um, auxiliary things, all of these peripheral things, when we're focusing on him, they kind of begin to fade away as, yeah, you know what? A fat bank account would be nice. Sure. Got that. But I can look back to where I had zero money. Listen, there was a time Part of my testimony, a year, year and a half in my my life with Kim, neither one of us were able to work because of back injuries, surgeries, things like that. We had zero income mm. coming in, but yet we had food, we had a home, we had electricity. I mean, we had Amen. more than what we deserved, and that was just being blessed by God and his providence. Mm. Well, let me just make this even more practical. What about somebody that sins? How do they be thankful? I mean, if they've really blown it or you know, a small sin, big sin, doesn't matter. Sin is sin. So, but, you know, how do we how do we have gratefulness or thankfulness there? We understand that Jesus' sacrifice and his blood still covers that sin. No matter how big, no matter how small, we have a Savior who, as in Hebrews, is not, <clears throat> excuse me, he's not unaware of what we're going through, that has gone through and been tempted and been tried and faced what we face here currently, but that also his blood covers that sin. Amen. And that when, when we're repentant, when we're focused on him, when we're moving towards him, that the blood of Jesus Christ covers sins yesterday, today, and in our future. Amen. Amen. Thomas, uh, comments? Uh, not a whole lot. I uh, just, um, I think it's just encouraging, and then I think to focus on, like I think the uh, the faithfulness of God, I think is an important characteristic that we need not ignore. Uh, I think it's a really important thing, and it was a good challenge to us. Um, I think me and Kylie yesterday, we haven't actually had time to sort of sit and chat about it, but, uh, you know, Kylie and I are opening a coffee shop and, you know, she's going to be running it once it opens, but I'm really trying to do as much as I can to help her get it to open. You know, there's a lot of stuff like meetings with electricians and plumbers and bar designs and structural stuff. And it's all outside of my wheelhouse, but I'm trying to learn as much as I can. And it's been pretty stressful uh, and we're spending more money than I've ever spent in my life, you know, uh, which you have to do, like that's just part of it um, for opening a business. But 
uh, on Saturday we were out and we were getting lots of stuff. We got lots of furniture and lots of materials and loads of lumber and, and uh, just lots of bits and bobs. And the, you know, the amount of receipts I had in my hand at the end of the day, I mean, my anxiety was through the roof just because it's, I've never spent that much money before in one day. It was just like really stressful. And then we had that sermon yesterday morning of trusting his leading and taking those, you were challenging us to take, take those steps of faith when it feels uncomfortable, mm-hmm. if it's in a direction that you feel is God led, mm-hmm. which I think we do in this. And it was just an encouraging sort of m- motivator to trust God rather than try to trust my financial knowledge of is this wise or is it not? Or to, to flip that question to, is this to pursue a potential ministry opportunity for God? Mm. Or am I too timid and, and cowardly to see it through, you know? And um, so it was just a really nice challenge, I think, to trust him, um, you know, in something that is exciting, but also scary at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And um, so that, that was just kind of like where I was landing at the end of the sermon of just, uh, we, I went up for prayer at the end with, with Terry there just to sort of say, like, I need a little bit of prayer to say, like, pray over that I, I focus well on this trust. Um, not blind trust, because I think it's well-earned yeah. <laughs> trust. Um, so that's kind of what my focus was at the end. Amen. Amen. Good stuff right there. I, I, you know, that's practical. I, I like things that are practical because, you know, that's what we need in our lives. You know, it's easy to have doctrine, but one of the things that you talked about before, if it doesn't work into our lives, it's impractical, you know, and I think that, you know, our teachings and our things about Jesus should affect our lives and change and transform. And that's my takeaway. Let's do the takeaways. My takeaway is going to be um, attitude is everything. And I, I really believe that um, we have to develop. This is something that we have to learn yeah. to do. This is not just going to be some I always tell my 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 daughter asked me for something and I'm like it's not magic I'm like it's not magical it's not going to happen you have to work to, we have to work towards this we have to work at developing this shield this you know attitude of thanksgiving it's not going to come all it's easy to be thankful in the good times and that's where we should practice but hey we even need more practice when things aren't so great when we're going through a dry time amen um Mine is that from an obedience standpoint, because that's, you know, kind of tying this all in the getting out of where we're comfortable is one of the most difficult things Mm -hmm. for us to do. And Elijah was obedient to God, not because there was a better situation that lay ahead of him. Mm -hmm. He was obedient to God because of the voice of God Mm -hmm. that was speaking in his life. And that's, that's a difficult thing to do because we always, um, you know, we, we want to move from where we're at to a better situation. Uh, but again, dry times don't always equate to God's discipline. It can mean his approval as well. Yeah, good stuff. Thomas? Uh, probably just what I was saying, like the um, focusing on God's character, his trustworthy character, his promises and his oaths, and trying to keep all of this stuff in mind in every decision that we make. Um I think it's just good practice as a believer, you know, and, uh, and it's just a good challenge to always make sure that he's at the center of every decision that we make, every challenge that we go through, every every good time and every bad time is to try and have him focused as the main character um, of, of our story because um, I think we can get really easily distracted um, by, by our circumstances or by other things, but knowing that he's sovereign and he's in control I think is always a good comfort to have. Yeah. Amen, amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. Again, if you could hit that like button. Um, If you have any questions or comments, we encourage that you would just put them right down in there. Put a comment. If you would like to reach us, reach us at FCCGrayson.com, or you can look us up online and give us a call. We'd love to have your participation here at this church if you don't have a church already. Um, With that said, could we close out in prayer? Would you close? Yeah, sure. Father, thank you again for this time. Uh, It's a wonderful time uh, each Monday morning that we can gather here and uh, fellowship, uh, spend time with my brothers, talk more about you and and dive a little deeper into your word. And God, we, uh, I just want to close this out by saying thank you for your faithfulness Mm -hmm. to us uh, and help us to be more faithful to you. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen.